Hello, my name is Justin Langrick, and today we're going to be talking about Jorne, which represents a unique dosing strategy in the treatment of ADHD. So here are the objectives for today's in-service presentation. By the end of the presentation, you should be able to list the signs and symptoms of ADHD, identify the drug classes that represent first-line pharmacotherapy for ADHD treatment, distinguish how Jorne is unique among those first-line ADHD agents, and then we'll look at the potential side effects and concerns with using not only Jorne, but all the stimulant medications involved in ADHD. So to introduce us to some of the symptoms we might see in ADHD, let's take a look at a patient case. We have LD, who's very artistic and talented, but he's noted to have trouble paying attention for any prolonged period of time, and he often jumps from one task to another. He's known to be unreliable, he procrastinates quite a bit, he rarely meets his assignment deadlines, and he, he avoids tasks that require sustained mental effort. Generally, he seems disorganized, he's easily distracted, and his behavior is so severe that it interferes with his quality of his personal and professional life, and he's having a hard time making a living as an artist, despite being remarkably talented. So when we look at the symptoms of ADHD as defined in DSM-5, we note that LD displays many of these symptoms of inattention, often making careless mistakes, difficulty sustaining attention, uh, does not seem to be able to pay attention when spoken to, poor follow-through with instructions, has a hard time organizing his tasks, avoids uh, sustained mental effort, loses things, he's easily distracted, and he's often forgetful in daily activities. And so while inattention is one manifestation of ADHD, another way the disorder may manifest itself is through hyperactivity and impulsivity, which can be seen in symptoms such as fidgeting, leaving the seat when remaining seated is to be expected, running or climbing around when it's inappropriate or otherwise being described as restless, unable to play quietly, seeming to be on the go or having a motor uh, that's nonstop, talking excessively, not waiting your turn, and then interrupting others. So according to DSM-5, the way we would diagnose ADHD is to have the manifestation or of six or more of these symptoms per category, either inattention or hyperactivity, for at least six months. And patients can have symptoms in both categor categories, which would be deemed mixed ADHD. These symptoms should occur in at least two settings, such as home, work, school, and so forth. So if it only occurs at home or only occurs at school, it's not ADHD. Uh, it might be something related to that specific environment that the patient is struggling with. They should display multiple symptoms before they are 12 years of age. And then the thing that uh, distinguishes ADHD from normal behavior, when we look at those ADHD symptoms, they describe every two-year-old and most six-year-olds. But what distinguishes normal childhood behavior from ADHD is that these behaviors are so severe that they impact that patient's ability to function either socially, academically, or occupationally. So when we look back at our patient LD, we do see that he does show at least uh, six of those symptoms of ADHD, particularly those inattention symptoms of ADHD. And these presumably do take place in multiple settings. Furthermore, these are severe enough that they're impacting his ability to make a living despite his talents as an artist. And therefore it would be likely that if this patient were to present, he would be diagnosed with ADHD. Interestingly enough, our patient is a real person, and so that description of our patient case was a description of Leonardo da Vinci, and many modern historians do believe that Leonardo da Vinci had ADHD. If he were our contemporary, how might he have been treated? The American Association of Pediatrics recommends the use of stimulants from either the methylphenidate or amphetamine dextroamphetamine drug class as the first-line treatment for ADHD, as these are the most effective drug choices in the setting of that disorder. As we can see, we have a lot of options to choose from, including pills, capsules, chewables, solutions, and patches. And in addition to all the different dosage forms, we do have to consider that individual patient response to these drugs is highly patient-specific. For example, we could have a patient that is non-responsive to amphetamine, but is adequately treated with methylphenidate, or vice versa. Or a patient may be responsive to both, and in a small minority of ADHD patients, some are not responsive to either of these stimulant classes. In addition to these dosage forms, we also see that we have long release and short release formulations. Long release formulations are typically preferred because they're more convenient, they only have to be given once a day, whereas the short acting formulations have to be given once in the morning and again around lunchtime, typically requiring school time administration. However, the short acting formulations can be less expensive than the long acting formulations. So when we do select a specific agent to treat a patient with, we see that there are a number of factors to consider, and these are all highly patient-specific. So in this chart here, we have the amphetamine stimulants. And here we have our methylphenidate stimulants. And so, uh, as I stated, there are a number of things we have to consider when we are selecting a specific agent. However, 
the majority, the overwhelming majority of all of these agents do have one thing in common. They have to be given in the morning. Uh, and so this may work for the majority of patients. They can be given the medication when they wake up and they can start to kick in uh, when they get to school. But this could be a problem in patients who have symptoms that require control close to the time of awakening, as these drugs can take as long as two hours after administration to actually start working. And so, for example, if we had a patient with ADHD symptoms that are so severe that they interfere with that patient's ability to prepare for the day without adequate pharmacotherapeutic control of their symptoms, or if they have some other issue that makes daytime administration of these medications difficult, they may have difficulty with the majority of these AM dose stimulant agents. The one that we're going to look at today is the exception to that rule. It is the only stimulant agent treating ADHD that can be dosed at nighttime, and that is our methylphenidate derivative called Jorne. So Jorne is an extended release methylphenidate product indicated for ADHD in children age 6 and up. But what makes this medication unique among the stimulant agents is that it is also delayed release. So we give this medication at night, but because it is delayed release, it doesn't actually start working until about 12 hours after administration. Therefore, if we time it right, we can give this to a patient the night before and have it kick in right around the time when they wake up. The manufacturer's recommendation is that this be dosed at uh, sometime close to bedtime, anywhere between 6.30 and 9.30 p.m. at the same time every day. And then you can adjust that dose until you get the ideal awakening control, but once you do find that time that works best for that patient, the manufacturer does recommend dosing it at or around the same time each day. So when we're looking at whether or not Jornay is effective, it is in that methylphenidate drug class, which is a first-line recommendation by the American Association of Pediatrics due to the effectiveness of treating ADHD. However, when we're looking at some agent-specific benefits of Jornay, we do see some benefit, particularly with regards to control of early morning symptoms. And so a six-week open-label trial of once daily dose Jornay in kids 6 through 12 years old found that after six weeks, uh, they were able to reduce the time to complete their morning routine by about 15 minutes after six weeks on Jornay. And so at the start of this trial, it took these kids about an hour to get ready for the day. And at the end of that six week period, it took them about 43 minutes. And so while the time savings of 15 minutes may seem questionable, consider the fact that most parents only allocate about an hour to get their kids ready for the day. That 15 minutes is a 25% time savings in that short amount of time allocated to get ready for the entire day. And so that 25% savings could be the difference between that kid being well prepared and ready to face the day or him starting that day out being frazzled and stressed. This is an extended release formulation of methylphenidate and so the effect does last throughout the day. They had early morning control and that control persisted through at least 8 p.m. as indicated by improved functional activity on the SCAMP-CS scale when compared to placebo. In this case, placebo is an uh, acceptable comparator for this drug since individual response to ADHD medications is highly patient specific there's not really another active agent that we could have done an apple to apple comparison with and so when we're looking at Jornay either the medication worked or it didn't and in this specific trial it does seem like this medication worked when we look at the adverse reactions in Jornay these are all adverse reactions that are common to stimulant ADHD medications in both drug classes, either the amphetamine or methylphenidate drug classes, and they include insomnia, decreased appetite, affect lability, uh, increased blood pressure, and in the case of Jornay specifically, some extensive wallet toxicity. So the drug costs about $14.80 a capsule or about $444 a month. Some things I would like to point out about these adverse effects, uh, the rate of insomnia does seem to be a little bit higher than the other stimulant medications. And so depending on what study that you look at, the rate of insomnia in the stimulant class of ADHD medications is about 33%. And in the six week trial here, it was 41%. So there is some slight increase, but it did seem to uh, somewhat level off over the course of that six weeks. And during a follow on one week placebo controlled phase, new onset insomnia was only about 7% compared to 9% in placebo. And so it does seem to be an initial response to that medication to have those high rates of insomnia, but it is something that seems to uh, be tolerable over time. The next thing I want to point out is effect lability. And so that is actually a common comorbidity in ADHD. It's difficult to say if that's from the drug itself or if it's because of that comorbid condition in ADHD. With all the methylphenidate stimulant drugs, not just Jorne, but all of them, there are some potential uh, severe adverse effects. But I want to caveat that by saying that 
these adverse effects, they sound very scary, but they're extremely rare when the drug is taken at normal doses. And so these can include sudden cardiac death if a patient has a previous cardiac abnormality. I want to note here that the rate of sudden cardiac death in patients taking methylphenidate without a cardiac abnormality is not increased compared to those not on any stimulant medication. And so it, it is a rare condition and it, they do have to have predisposing factors to be susceptible to that scary sounding adverse effect. Because there's that loss of appetite, there's that potential for stunted growth. The solution there would be to have that kid eat compensatory meals and snacks during the time the medication is least effective. And so usually that's late in the evening, have them eat a big dinner uh, or big late night snack to compensate for the fact that they may be eating less throughout the day. There is a high potential for abuse. So those with ADHD, many of them do have those impulse symptoms of ADHD. They're predisposed to drug abuse and we're giving them a C2 controlled substance that is has a high potential for abuse. And so that's definitely something we want to consider when we're giving these patients medications is, is there a fear that the patient or a family member that has access to that drug may divert that medication? And then the last thing to look out for are psychiatric behaviors, which require immediately no notifying the doctor as these can be an emergency situation. And these include new or worsening behaviors, hallucinations, or worsening bipolar disease. Again, I want to point out that these effects are not specific to Jornet. They are class-wide effects in the methylphenidate stimulant drug class. And uh, these effects, although they are very serious, they are also extremely rare when the medication is taken as prescribed. So when would we use Jornet? To reiterate, Jornet is indicated for those ADHD patients that are at least six years old, but we would want to consider Jornet specifically when that patient has early morning ADHD symptoms that are so severe that it's impairing their ability to get ready for the day. And so, like I said, all the other stimulant agents, they're dosed in the morning and they do take some time to start working, but Jornet is dosed at night and it can be timed so that it starts working as soon as that kid awakes. If a patient's early morning symptoms are not severe enough that they require immediate control among awakening and their symptoms are tolerable until their AM dose medication does start to work, then really there's no reason to consider Jornet. It loses its comparative advantage and we could consider one of those less expensive alternative agents. Another uh, case we could consider Jornet in is if there is some problem with morning dosing of the medication, whatever that may be. If something is prohibiting that patient from taking that medication as prescribed in the morning, Jornet is the only stimulant medication that can be given at night. And then finally, this is a very expensive drug, so we would want to limit its use to those patients that could actually afford it or they have insurance coverage for it. So to sum up everything we learned today, ADHD is characterized by the presence of six or more inattention or hyperactivity symptoms in multiple settings that are severe enough to impair normal functioning. The first line treatment for ADHD is a stimulant medication, either from the methylphenidate or amphetamine drug class. If either of those don't work, you switch to the other one. And so if methylphenidate doesn't work, you switch to amphetamine or vice versa. Uh, among those stimulants, Jornet is the only ADHD stimulant medication that can be dosed at night for onset that is effective immediately upon awakening. And then Jornet shares all of the side effects and concerns that the other stimulant medications have. Thank you for going on this Jornet with me. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to send me an email at the address below. And here you can see the references I used for this presentation.